Another type of hypothesis test would be to determine if two categorical variables are dependent or independent. In other words, does the result from one variable impact the probability that you would have a result from the other variables? In order to do this hypothesis test, though, we need to know how to find expected values from a contingency table. The way we find expected values from a contingency table is we will use the formula that the expected value is equal to the row total times the column total divided by the overall total. We're going to have our information in rows and columns based on the categories of the two variables. And we'll take the row total times the column table and divide by the total total. Let's take a look at what this looks like and how Excel can actually help us do this a little bit quicker. A survey was done. of community college students, university students, and non-students about how much community service time is done. So what we'll have is we'll have some students who are community college students, some students who are university students, and some students who are neither college nor university. They are non-students. And we're going to split them up into three categories. One category is they do one to three hours of community service. Another category is they do four to six hours of community service. And another category is they're going to do seven to nine hours of community service. And so for the community college group, there is 111 that did one to three hours. There's 96 that did four to six hours. There's 48 that did seven to nine hours. For university students, there were 96 who did one to three hours, 133 who did four to six hours, and 61 who did seven to nine hours. For the neither group, there were 91 who did 1 to 3 hours. There were 150 who did 4 to 6 hours. And there were 53 who did 7 to 9 hours. And if we were testing the number of hours that students did in community service compared to their category, and we want to know if those two were independent or if there seemed to be some relationship, we would need to calculate the expected values. To get the expected values, we first need to know the totals for each row and column. So we'll add an extra row for totals. And we'll do some quick adding to find out that there were a total of 255 community college students, 290 university students, 294 neither students. Looking at the individual columns, there were a total of 298 who did 1 to 3 hours, 379 who did 4 to 6 hours, and 162 who did the 7 to 9 hours. And I could either add the total column or the total row, get the same answer, 839 people in this survey. So if I wanted to use the formula for the expected values, I might start with, hey, let's look at the community college students who are in one to three hours of community service. We'll look at what row and column the one to three hour community college student is in. We're going to multiply the row total of 255 times the column total of 298. And then we divide by the overall total of 839. When I do that, I get 90.57. If these variables are truly independent, I would expect 90.57 students to fall in that category. We had 111. And then we would do this for every single spot. If I wanted to look at the community college students who did four to six hours of community service, I'll look at the four to six hour community college students and notice what row 
and column that student is in. And that's going to be row 255, column total 379, divided by the overall total of 839. And we would find out that we would expect there to be 115.19 community college students doing four to six hours of community service. And we would continue to do this all the way through. The challenge is this takes a lot of time. And so we're going to show you a nice little trick on Excel to make this easier. So on Excel, what we can do is we can type in equals. And we will click the row total. Times, click the column total, and divide by, click the total total. And then we're going to make a minor edit to the formula. We're going to put a dollar sign before the number, numbers and letters for the overall total. And we should do that twice, two for the numbers and two for the letters. And then we can drag the formula. What does that mean? Let's take a look at it. First thing I'm going to do on my data is the same thing we did by hand, is we're going to find the totals for the row and the column. We can get the total by saying equals sum and open a parentheses, and then dragging through all the ones we want to add together. When we hit Enter, it adds those together. And I can click that dot in the bottom and drag it down. For the columns, I can say equals sum for sum, open a parentheses, select the numbers I want to add. And when I hit Tab or Enter, I get that total. Clicking the dot, I can drag it across, and we get our totals. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my labels down here, one to three hours, four to six hours, and seven to nine hours, and my CC, university, and neither. And then in the first row, first column, I'm going to hit equals. And that's going to be the total from the first row. Click that. Times, shift eight, the first column total like that, divided by the overall total. Then I'm going to go into this little bar here to edit my formula. Notice my denominator is E5. I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the E and a dollar sign in front of the 5. Because that said E5, also on top, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the E and a dollar sign in front of the 5. Notice I did it twice, twice for the E, twice for the 5 leaving the other ones as they are. Those dollar signs are going to allow me to drag my formula across by clicking the dot in the bottom right and down. And now I've got my expected values for each of the categories that I could then compare to my observed values from the sample. And we'd be ready to conduct our hypothesis test. We'll do that in another video. This video was focused on how to find those expected values and using Excel with those dollar signs in front of the denominator and those same values in the numerator allows us to drag that formula and quickly find the expected value for our contingency table.